Hi, hey Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Uh, today I want to introduce you to my new bench top vise for my workbench. And I actually can use it, 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 I can mount it and take it off, and I can use it anywhere I want. Uh, so let me show you my new vise. Right here. What? It doesn't look like a vise to you? Well, stay tuned, and I'm going to show you. Not only is he going to make one vice, I'm going to make two vices out of this. So let's go ahead and let's see how we do that. First thing you have to do is you have to think outside the box. So actually a, a hand screw clamp is actually pretty versatile. If you take and turn both of these the same direction at the same time, you're actually moving that clamp parallel. I know they show you on normally when you're using it, you have to have one on each side and you have to turn it and it gets confusing when you're going on and off and yay yay yay. Well, I'm here to tell you that this isn't so hard to use as a bench top vise and if you spit that chewing gum out so you don't get confused, I'll show you how to use this and how to make this without it doing any modification to this vise at all. So, in order to use this as a bench vise, if it's upright like this, then I can put stuff in it here and clamp it down and hold it. But you got to figure out how to hold this. So quite simply, the easiest way is just to take a board. Let's put it on there. Let's put a vise on it right here, uh, clamp on it right here. Now, let's put a second clamp on it, right here. Now we have the eerie makings of a vise, and we can control it. This is the stationary jaw, and this is the movable jaw on a vise, and you keep it parallel by turning them both at the same time. So now I can take my piece and put it in here and tighten it down. Now I put this knob on here myself, it's just threaded on, there's no, no glue or anything holding it. And I just put that on there so it makes it easy for me to turn this knob from this side. I don't have to reach around. I don't use this to hand tighten it tight. I only use this to do easy adjustments when there's nothing in the vise. So if I take this loose, from there, now I can turn this from this way. That way I can turn both of these at the same time with both hands and make it so that as long as I turn the same direction at the same speed, they'll stay pretty well parallel. And I adjust it to where I want it to put whatever I'm trying to put in there. The beauty of this type of bite, of this type of setup is also that even if you have a piece that is not parallel, here, this has a strong taper on it, but I could put this in here up against the wand and bring my jaw up to it and eventually I can actually bring it in and make it clamp on both surfaces and I can get a good tight clamp on this. So it's kind of a nice to have it use it as a vice on top of my workbench but sometimes instead of having this way what if we take and turn it this way now we clamp it down here now I can put my piece in this way instead and tighten it down so I can actually put it in this way too so what if we make a bracket to hold this that we can put it in any direction we want. That sounds even better, so let's do that. So what I did was, instead of that two by four, what I did is I made this. This is one of the old wheels that I made when I made that six inch drum sander. This is one of my leftovers from the plywood. I put a, it had a quarter inch hole in the bottom already, so I got a long quarter inch bolt. And this is a dowel rod with a T-nut the holes drilled through it, and I spun this up on there so as to lock this down on there. Now I can take this, put it in any bench drive hole I have around the shop, drop it down in there. Now I can take my vise and let's put it on this way. Okay. 
and I'm going to just clamp it down again. And now, I have a vise that I can have turned this way, or this way, or anywhere in between. I can put this any direction I want. So now my vise is real easy to turn. When I get it where I want it, I just take a second clamp, put it on here. But also I can take, instead, since the bolt comes out the bottom, I can just put a knob on here. So I put a washer and a knob on here. and I can lock it down. Now, if you're gonna do it this way, then you're gonna to wanna to put sandpaper on the bottom of this wheel so that that sandpaper will help bite into your tabletop just enough that when you snug this down, that'll hold it from turning. If you don't wanna do that, you can just come in here, even though you had that snug there so you can still move it. If you wanna lock it in one place, once you get it where you want it, just put in the clamp on there again and clamp it down and now It'll stay put. So this is a great little vise. Easy to use. Easy to, uh, to let loose. But this is only one vise. This goes on top of your bench top. Let me show you another way. What if you want to take your pieces and hold them vertically? So instead of this, if you remember the other day, I showed you a couple of my... that I bought, hand screw clamps, 10 inch at uh, Harbor Freight. And what I did with those is I actually mounted them on these two boards. Uh, one is here and this one is here. This is about three inches, this is about four. And now, and I put bench dog holes here that line up to the spacing and the distance to line up to any of my bench dogs around. So now I can take this vise and I have this glued and screwed to this top surface. And I can put this one in here like this and put my bench dog and put a clamp on it here. And now I have a very sturdy clamp that now I can put something in vertical. So now I can take and screw this, keep it in parallel till I get it to the right distance. And then I can finish adjusting it using these knobs. Now I screwed this on here. I just drilled a hole and then I just threaded it on to hold it. And that's there not to hold, to tighten down. I use this regular clamp handle for that. I use this so that when it's loose, and I want to move it, I don't have to reach across to turn these. It makes it much easier to turn these at the same time in the same direction. And that's how I can adjust it quick and easy. So it takes two hands to put it about where you want it. Then when you put your piece in and you get it snugged up and tightened down, if I want to tighten this one down, I don't do it with this one. I do it back here. So it makes it quick and easy to adjust and to put something in here vertically. But what if, instead of one little part here, put it in here, because this is four and a half inches. What if we wanted to do something really wide, a whiteboard? So if I'm going to put a whiteboard in here instead, so I open this up. And now that I have this, now I think instead of making one of those, I actually made two of them. That's why I had bought two of those. And this one is just the opposite of that one. So this one sets on this side and the jaws open on this side. So now I can take this one, adjust it in there to whatever width this board is, find my bench dog hole, put it down in there, and then clamp this one down. And now I can actually use two clamps.
And now I'm holding this board on the outside edges sturdy by using both of these. And whatever width this board is, I adjust these to whatever width they need to be. That way I can put any width board into my vise setup vertically and work on it here. So if I have a board here that's real wide doing dovetails on it, I get good support on both outer edges of my board so it doesn't vibrate as I'm cutting and doing my dovetail or whatever handwork I'm doing on my board, on my piece. It's not a bad little setup, easy. I only paid $8 a piece for these two hand clamps and this is quite nice. Also, if you remember back, I did what I call a dead man, a sliding dead man. Uh, only mine, instead of sliding, I can put it anywhere I want because this also works on my bench dogs, just like everything else. I had these bench dog holes around the outside. Well, my bench dog, dead man, just sits in there like this. I lined up to my bench dog hole and I put it in. I can use this with this if I want because in all reality, Oops, let me get this out. In all reality, I can actually put something in like down here to use as a dead man to help support my piece if I have a real long piece or whatever. So I can, and the reason this works the way it does is because I made sure when I made this piece, this spacer is the same thickness as my bench dog and as my vise, my face vise is over there. So that anything I put in here vertically, this surface and that surface made up to each other. So that it's flat all the way across. So if I put one of these on each side of my face vise over there, my face vise is not going to interfere with using my two vices, my two jaws like this. So I can set this up either one or two anywhere around on my workbench using my bench dog hole system around the perimeter. Sliding dead man works. My face vise works with it. And or it works by itself or with two of them. So great little vise. I really like being able to take this one, turn it this way, and use it as a vise on top of my bench. So but we're not done. I haven't done finished it yet. But I couldn't hold back. I had to show you what I was doing. So I really like this vise here. I didn't even have to modify a clamp. And honestly, I shouldn't have had to modify this one. I made a mistake. I glued this to this board. And what I should have done was drill two holes in it, put inserts into the other one, and just screwed it down with a couple of quarter inch bolts. And it probably would have been better off. Then I could take it on and off. I did put sandpaper on the jaw here. On the outer jaw, the inner jaw is still just flat, it's just wood. And that really helps with the holding power of this as a vise by doing that. I haven't done it to this one yet, but I'm going to do it to this one so that if I want to use this bench top type vise, I'll be able to also do that. Um, the other thing is, I think that it's probably a good idea to put sandpaper on the bottom so that when you put this in there and you tighten it down, that sandpaper helps grip and hold it so it doesn't spin so easy. So, those are the hints. Um, if you want to know more information about how I made this, uh, just leave comments below. If you like this video or if you learned something new about it, please hit that like button. It always helps me out. Uh, most importantly though, Please come back again because we're not nowhere near done. Wait till you see me turn one of these things into a leg vise. So, so hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.